MG Rob back with you and today we got the 76 MGB that was just towed in here he was driving around and the clutch stopped working so what I figured more than likely the problem is the slave sonar was dripping and the master sonar just finally ran out of fluid not too overly uncommon of a problem on these things and not too terrible a fix unless Unless you want to get in there and do the master cylinder, then it's a little more time consuming, but still not terrible. So the first thing to check is look in the master cylinder, which is right back here in this corner. Of course, this is the brake master up here, and that's the clutch master way back there. So, yep, empty. Typical black at the very bottom from the rubber from the seals, very common. So yeah, out of clutch fluid. All right, so now here we are up underneath the car and looking at this here. Yep, slay cylinder is pretty nasty on this one. So that's a quick, easy fix there. Now I'll have to look at the uh, Clevis pin and rod, see how much wear there is in that. Take a close look at the hose to see if it feels like it's got any really soft and whether it should be replaced or not. Now, the only real hard part about this job is that hose. That can be a real pain in the butt to get loose here. Not so much on this particular car, but the earlier ones, this bracket is a lot higher up in here. And it's really hard to get a wrench onto it and do anything with it without taking the starter out. Now, one of the little oddities about the MGB is the clutch line here is actually a holdover from earlier days where it's actually a Whitworth wrench to take it off. But... It's for well, 3 sixteenths Whitworth. But sometimes a 7 sixteenths line wrench will actually fit on it if it's a somewhat loose fitting 7 sixteenths. Some, some wrenches you can just, you really fight and really hard to put them on there. This is one of the ones that fits just a little looser and will actually go onto it. So here's the new slave cylinder. And this is how they're shipped when you get them out of the box. Now the bleeder is only in this hole for shipping purposes only because it boxes better. So you always want to take that out, put it into this hole. And then the hose goes into this hole. It's always a good idea to use a new ceiling washer. But if you don't have a ceiling washer handy and you're sitting in your garage, you have nothing available to you, but you have a propane torch, you can actually take these ceiling washers, heat them up till they change color and, and, and anneal them, and then reuse them and they'll seal again. All right, so here's the old slave cylinder off the car, and yeah, yeah, you can see it's pretty, pretty much done. And the old hose looks like it might be factory original. Now I do have this nifty little modified wrench that I use to get up in there to hold the nut. Um, it's hard to get any torque on that, but it'll actually get up in there by the oil pan and everything to help hold it. Now you do need to reuse the nut and the star washer on the end of the hose when you put it in there. And I always tighten the hose to the slave cylinder first before putting it in the car. And I'll show you why here in a moment. So as long as this is already tightened to here, I can let this spin up in here to get it lined up here without having a big old kink or twist into the hose. If the hose is already tight before you tighten that, 
It could be in all kinds of different positions and have weird twists and kinks in the hose if you don't do it that way. So in this case, the rod and the clevis isn't terribly old. There's not that much wear in it. So I'm just going to reuse them. But a little bit of um, grease on there to give lubrication so that it moves smoothly and doesn't wear too quickly. All right, so now we have it back in place. I still got to tighten the bolts. These are 9 sixteenths. Now the, the hose here, most of your aftermarket stuff, this will be a 17 millimeter rather than the original SAE size. And I always put these clevis pins down. Hard to do one-handed. So it's down, that way the cotter pin will be through here and if the cotter pin were to ever fall out, you won't lose the pin. And then now that this is all tightened down, you can tighten this nut here with this being in a fairly natural, relatively relaxed position and then tighten the clutch line into the hose. And then it's ready to refill and bleed the clutch. Now, when it comes to bleeding the clutch, there's many ways to tackle this. Some people like to uh, suck it out through the bottom or force flew it up through the bottom. And some people just pump away at it forever. And sometimes just pumping at it can be really difficult, especially if you just replaced or rebuilt the master cylinder, because getting it to initially prime can be quite difficult. My preferred method is I have an old master cylinder cap here that I put a fitting in so I just screw that on there, hook up my air hose to it from the air compressor with about eh, three to five pounds of air pressure on top of it. It doesn't take very much. Then go to the bottom, open the bleed nipple, and watch the air come out. Now you gotta be careful to stop and top this off every once in a while because this does not hold that much fluid. But you can go down there, open the bleed nipple, let some air come out, close it, come up, top it off, go back and forth a couple times until you've got fluid out of there. Then I use a helper to pressure bleed it the old fashioned way with uh, by you know, pumping the pedal and, and opening the bleed nipple. So with a couple pounds of air pressure on top, all I got to do now is just open this bleed nipple until I got a reasonable stream of fluid coming out, which I'd already gotten some of the air out before I started the video. But so now at this point, I can go top that off again and we can start actually pumping the pedal because it will pressurize now. Go ahead and give it a pump. You're already get, starting to get some slight movement already at this point. So the whole reason why you do not put the hose in the original hole that the nip, the that was open in the box is because the way the, the cylinder is made, this actually ends up being the highest point of the cylinder to bleed from. Plus, if you put the hose here, it really puts stress on the hose to go up in at that angle. So now once you've got this thing bled, as well as you think you can get it bled by pumping and opening this up, Here's one little trick to getting the last of the air out to make, that can make all the difference in the world. Is once 
you get somebody to pump it and you bleed it, you think you got it all bled out. While the bleeder's open, grab a hold of this and squeeze it down and push it all the way till it bottoms out. And you will always end up getting one last little spurt of air out of it as that bottoms out. Then you tighten it and have your helper pump it back up while holding it in and you'll feel the pressure and go on out and it'll be good to go. Now I wanted to film doing that, but um, I just don't have enough hands to hold the camera and do everything at once. So, but we got a big spurt of air out of it right then. So go ahead and pump it a couple times. So, all right. Now what you're looking for, you're gonna see roughly uh, like 7 16 3 8 half inch of travel right here. And if you got that much, your clutch more than likely should work. Now it is generally notoriously hard to get brake fluid into these reservoirs, especially like these later cars where the hoods don't go up very high. Depending on what year it is, the hood prop can be on the left side or the right side. This one was on the right side, so then the left side wants to sag. So I usually just prop the hood open a little further and take the um, prop off. But you should always wrap some um, a rag around the master center in case you spill some. What I like to do is take a generally a smaller can of brake fluid and just put a couple holes in it. Usually I go smaller than this one. And you pour out the one hole with a smaller, well, like, you know, a lot smaller hole than that usually. And you can dribble it in there kind of slowly without dumping it everywhere. Or the other thing I usually do most of the time is I pick these things up here. These are cattle syringes. You can pick them up at, uh, you know, tractor supply or anything like that. And you can just suck some out of the brake fluid container and then just push it right into the master cylinder. And then you don't have to, all you, you just make sure you don't drip it across the fender. And you won't spill brake fluid everywhere and you can control it really easily.